Good evening. We'll go ahead and get started this evening. Thanks for coming. Um, Renee, please show all board members except for Ms. Kraft present. She's here. She's here. Where'd she go? Oh, she snuck in on me. Okay. Please show all board members present. <laughs> All right, could would you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next item is one of our favorite items, the uh, board salutes. We've got three tonight. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and start out with the first one, recognizing Utica Elementary as a four-star school. Very proud. Um, Utica Elementary is among 311 schools in the state of Indiana to be named a four-star school for the 2012-13 school year. Glenda Ritt, State Superintendent of Public Instruction, announced the four-star schools on April 15th. Each year, the Indiana Department of Education recognizes schools that perform in the up 25th percentile of schools in performance on ISTEP Plus and state exams, as well as their rating determined by the National No Child Left Behind statues, statues Adequate Yearly Progress, also known as AYP. High schools must rank in the top quarter of all Indiana schools for its combined passing percentile, percentage I'm sorry, on end of course assessments in English and mathematics. I am honored to name these schools as our four-star schools for this year, stated uh, Ms. Ritz. Winning this award required excellent work by teachers, administrators, students, and parents throughout the school year, and on behalf of the entire Indiana Department of Education, I send them my sincere congratulations. The board salutes Utica Elementary. have another amazing accolade to recognize tonight. Congratulations to Utica Elementary Kindergarten teacher Hilda Kendrick, who has been with the district for 40 years. She was selected as the Horseman Indiana State Teachers Association Hoosier Educator of the Year. So we're not talking Clark County, we're not talking Greater Clark, we're not talking Region 10. We're talking the state of Indiana. The purpose of the award is to recognize, reward, and promote excellence in teaching and advocacy for the education profession. Ms. Kendrick will be honored this weekend and receive $2,500 from Horace Mann. <laughs> Party! <laughs> she will now go on as the ISTA's nominee for the 2015 National Education Association Foundation Award for Teaching Excellence and represent the entire state of Indiana at the Salute to Excellence in Education Gala in Washington, D.C. The NEA Foundation Award for Teaching Excellence is awarded to an educator with outstanding professional practice 
who advocates for the profession, engages the community, exhibits professional development leadership, and pays attention to diversity. With much thanks for your service and good luck, we wish Hilda Kendrick, our state and Greater Clark County Schools representative at the National next February. White, will you do the honor of reading our next salute? Sure, we're on a roll here. It's all great. Uh, we'd like to congratulate uh, our Clark County Director of Facilities, Steve Hobgood, for being selected as the Indiana Association of School Business Officials, mm -hmm. School Business Official of the Year for the Indiana School Officials uh, Region 10 uh, winner. Uh, Steve will be recognized at the, as I say, ASBO, annual meeting on Thursday, May 8th in French Lake, Indiana. ASBO is, a, uh, ASBO is a professional organization which strives for the promotion and the union of these individuals involved in school business affairs such as finance, accounting, purchasing, maintenance, and operations, and human resources, facilities and grounds, food service, technology, and transportation. Currently, it has approximately 900 members representing over 90% of Indiana school public, public school corporations. The board salutes Steve Hobgood.
thing. They've been down this. They've seen that movie. We they really, know what's yeah, coming. We really are boring. They don't like you. Right. Right. We'll take all action items as one. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item is the approval of the agenda. Do we have any changes this evening? Uh, no, Mr. President. Okay. All right. You need a motion, motion to approve. To approve. Second. Thank you, Ms. Saturn. Thank you, Mr. White. All in favor? Seven up. All right. Next one will take the approval of the minutes from the previous meetings. We take all those together. Move to accept all minutes. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second. And thank you, Ms. Kraft. I think I heard. Ms. So. Ms. Perkins. Ms. Perkins. Excuse me. Okay. All right. They're fast. Sorry. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Okay. Seven up. Uh, Dr. Mellon, no comments, public comments on agenda items tonight? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Next is the consent agenda. Uh, it will be items one through six. I'd like to take all those together. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Questions, comments? All in favor? All right. Thank you. Mr. Satterley, as tradition, uh, would you please do the uh, gifts to buildings? Absolutely. This one's a short one. PTOs did a good job, but I do want to point out again that the Clark County Jail Commissary Fund, I see them on there quite often. So thank the, all the sheriffs out there and, and Mr. Rodden and his staff. So move to make a motion to accept. All right. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second. Thank you, Ms. Gilkey. Questions, comments? All in favor? All right. 7 0. Thank you. All right, we'll move next into action items. The first one is the One Vision Credit Union Partnership. And I'm sorry, I'm having a little problem with this one. Yeah. Ms. Lewis, thank you. <laughs> All right. Good evening. It's exciting to talk about the um, mergers and partnerships, and this is one that has been in place in Greater Clark for a long time, I think all the way back to 1959 when uh, the Teacher Association and some of the employees in Greater Clark encouraged the formation of a uh, credit union, and it actually began being housed out of Jeffersonville High School, and then it merged, I mean, it kind of grew in its size and had a few name changes, and and it ended up being the um, Clark County, Indiana Federal Credit Teachers uh, Association. And so, it, but it is a credit union, and so because of the relationship that we have had with them, uh, last year they merged with uh, another credit union, and at that time we didn't do anything to have that credit union recognized as our continuing credit union provider for um, services in Greater Clark. They have come to us with a proposal to uh, continue the services. They are a nonprofit organization, so even though they can provide banking services like your regular lenders do, they can usually provide them like interest rates for loans and things like that at a little lower cost or maybe a slightly higher cost for some of the savings investments. We've had a great relationship with the um, Teachers Credit Union. We think we will enjoy that same relationship with One Vision. Um, the superintendent's recommending approval of them to serve on a continuing basis as our credit union that services the employees for Greater Clark County Schools. One of the other things in their proposal that we thought was very um, generous was that they have agreed to make a $2,000 annual contribution to uh, the Greater Clark Educational Foundation will help with our ACT testing. You know, that's awesome to have that contribution that we know we can rely on. They will reevaluate annually, and certainly if they're having a good year, we would expect that we would have a better year than what their base contribution amount is. So um, we are asking the board to favorably consider this uh, continued partnership <laughs> under a new name, One Vision. All right, thank you. So moved. moved. Mr. Hall, <laughs> Mr. Satterley, second. <coughs> Questions, comments? 
All right. All in favor? All right. Thank you. 7 0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. And I think the next item is the Common School loan application. And Amy, I think, is going to take us through that. Um, several times uh, over the last couple of years, we have been eligible for and, and taken advantage of these low interest loans through the Department of Ed. And with the recent impact of the tax caps on capital projects, these loans for technology really help us out in terms of keeping moving forward. So um, each time Dr. Deichel <laughs> asked me to get an application going every, every time they become available. There was a short turnaround time, so the application was already due prior to this board meeting, and we only had a two-week turnaround for that. So what we'd like is the board's approval to go ahead and move forward with the application, and then upon um, award, we would come back for um, acceptance. Uh, Ms. Kraft and Mr. Satterley, I think, is the second. Questions, comments? All right. Oh, go oh, I'm ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. I think this was already signed May 1st. Mm -hmm. Is that the one? So right. it's already, we're it's approving. They, remove it. Our it was, they were due May 2nd. And yeah. so, but the time window was like the 15th through the 2nd. So we missed the, the other board meeting prior to the application. That's why we're late. Okay. So we can remove it if. Support. Let's hope you yes. choose to support it. But uh, mm -hmm. all right. Any other comments, questions? All in favor? All right. Seven zero. Thank you. Next is the letter of agreement with the Sheraton Hotel for the Greater Clark Connected Conference. We have a broader um, uh, use of keynote speakers this year, and so we were looking to try to keep business on this side of the river. So we um, approached the Sheraton. They are giving reduced rates for the room, and we expect um, staff or teachers from across the state to attend as well, so they would also get this rate. We knew we were going to have six keynote speakers. That was the minimum to get the rate down to $105, so if you approve the agreement, we'll expand on that. So moved. Second. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Hall, for the second. Any questions? All right. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Next is the sale of a bus contract route. Uh, Dr. Deichel? Yes. Um, Morris Gill was one of our contracted drivers. He passed away um, at the beginning of the year, I believe. And his daughter, Danny Bramble, is the executor of her father's estate. And she can no longer afford to run the routes, so she's uh, asking permission to sell 5W and 8W to Sherry Woods. And we need board approval on that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. All right, questions, comments? I just have a quick question. Um, Sandy reviewed this particular contract. It, normally it, it says it, but it, oh, it didn't, so I just wanted to clarify. It was just moving it over to somebody else. So. And, and nothing changed? No. Okay. Yeah, same dollar amount. Everything was just changing who we were paying. Okay. So it was effective as of May 1st. All right. All right. All in favor? All opposed? And then one abstain? And I just clarify, they're my best friends, so I figure I'd abstain. All right. Okay. Next item is the meal price increase. Yes. It's increase. Yes. And it seems like every year we're going to be coming before you asking for this increase because of the federal government. Uh, with the reauthorization of the National School Lunch Program, Congress enacted guidelines for school lunch pricing. Included in this act was a price lunch re equity requirement. In basic terms, this provision requires that paid lunches provide the same level of financial support for school lunches as free and reduced price meals. Simply put, a paid lunch needs to generate the same revenue per meal as provided by the federal government for participating free or reduced. Um, basically, I'm not going to read all of this. Natalie did a great job putting it all together. Under the guidance of the PLE, we are required to increase the price of paid student meals every year based on the annual increase to free and reduced price reimbursement. Our meal prices are currently in line with surrounding school districts and they will all be facing a similar mandated increase. Proposed price pricing for the 2014-15 school years are as follows. 
elementary paid lunch two thirty five and secondary paid lunch to sixty it's an increase of a dime for both and then we're also asking for an increase in milk we're currently at forty five cents we're asking to go to fifty five cents across all levels so the super superintendent recommends approval of the pros proposed increases in uh, the, the meal prices and, and milk thank you Ms. Satterley you have a second Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Everybody's a little shy today, I guess. <laughs> All right, questions, comments? Uh, Tom, what is a weighted average lunch? What's, what's weighted mean? Natalie, you're the expert. Um, they take the number of paper meals, so um, the number of elementary meals and the number of secondary meals, and they would weigh out the size of it. So it would be um, adjacent to it. All right, any other questions? All in favor? All right, he's 7 0. Thank you. Next item is the GPS lease approval. Yes. Uh, after much of our trials and tribulations and testing and meetings and conference calls and seminars, uh, I think we finally narrowed it down. We're going to go with Synovia. Um, I've used Synovia in, in two prior school districts, and I know what they can do. Um, the transportation department feels the best GPS system that will meet our goals is Synovia out of Indianapolis. We will be leasing 116 GPS units and 80 tablets that will give our buses turn-by-turn -turn instructions, which will be especially helpful for sub-drivers not familiar with that particular route. It will give us time and attendance message drivers as well as a ridership component for special education students, which Ann is really excited about, which identifies the number of students being transported. We'll also have the ability to generate the following reports, idling reports, speeding reports, bus driver time reports, stop reports, planned actual missed and extra stops, AM and PM bus arrival and departure, live feeds of bus tracking, real-time monitoring, accident and hard braking reports, maintenance reports, any reports described in the attached exhibits and any reports that can be generated by the software based on data provided by the school corporation and or obtained from the hardware including customized reports. This is a five-year lease at a, a monthly cost of 4484 and the lease was approved, uh, reviewed by Mrs. Lewis. So superintendent's recommending the approval of the lease agreement with Synovia for the GPS units. Thank you, Dr. Dykel. I have a motion. Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. White. <laughs> Questions, comments? Yeah, do we have a GPS system in place right now? Well, we, we were trying Synovia with Sprint and Verizon. Uh, we got rid of the geotabs. Uh, technically, we have 10 units currently that we are trying out. Now we just canceled the five with Sprint, so we only really have five units on our buses right now with Synovia. That's Synovia with Verizon? Correct, yes. In, Veri in the, the reality, if you remember, board, right. we were trying the Geotabs and Synovia and Verizon and Sprint and trying to find the, the best, most reliable <laughs> solution. The Geotabs, we had some issues with the negative impacts on some of our buses. So anyway, a lot of testing has been done over the last several months to get what we think is the right product. Yes. So it would be Synovia with Verizon. Dr. Dykel, my question is, I know our transportation fund is already, you know, kind of squeaking a little. So I just want to make sure, have we already budgeted this money in or how are we going to pay for it? It's budgeted in already. I think when I show you the cash flows next month, you'll see that we're actually going to be in the black unless something tragic happens. Um, I think in, in uh, bus replacement, we we're like 200000 in the black. In uh, bus operating, we we're 128000 in the black. So we're okay right now. And, and the main thing is, is the tax caps. You know, we're looking at a $3 million hit this year 
jumping from $1.9 million to $3 million, but I signed a document allowing the tax caps to be spread out over our two debt service funds. So that will save, debt service will pick up 50% of the $3 million tax cap. So that will really save transportation operating, bus replacement, and CPL. So that's where we really save it. So this will come out of operating? It will come out of both operating and bus replacement. So, I mean, if my math, this is about $300,000 to pay over five years? Yes. Right? And we have that money? You said it's budgeted in already? It's budgeted for this year. We don't have our budget yet for next year. We'll just be making those up within the next month or two. I'll start working. Well, within the next month I'll start working on it. We only do those budgets one year at a time. I just had one question, Dr. Dyckel. We implemented this in our corporation, and it made significant cost savings and efficiencies. And so do we have any projections yet on how much savings we might garner back from this? I mean, less miles driven? They're talking at least 15% to 20% is what they're telling us. So once we start looking where the drivers are accelerating too fast, if they're braking too hard, so we'll be able to cut down some on our maintenance costs. That's where we're looking at it, get better fuel efficiency. And then looking at the field trips, too. What are the actual times that the drivers are going out, coming back in? We're putting this also on the contract to drivers, too. Dr. Dyckel, just from a monitoring perspective, how are we monitoring for the benefit of the board the use? What's the plan to monitor all of this? Well, it will be weekly reports that will be generated. Ken will start looking at the weekly reports, giving it to Gary, and then we'll start sitting down with the drivers as far as who's accelerating too fast, who's braking too hard. It's going to give us a lot of good reports, good data that we can start using. We really don't have any data now. We'll be able to track miles. We can do PMs when we're supposed to do them. We have some buses, we only see them only when they break down. They might have 12,000 miles in between oil changes, and that's just way too long because you forget about them because they're up in Charlestown or up in New Washington, you know, like the minibuses. So we'll have a better handle on all of our buses. Board, the other thing, too, is it's our plan at the second board meeting in June to come back with a more in-depth transportation report that hopefully will talk about all this in greater detail for you. But we're going to end the school year, and then Dr. Dyckel and Mr. Green, Mr. Watson, et cetera, will come back with a report and provide some details because there's been a lot of work that's been done in the last couple of years with Versatrans and then this, and we want to make sure we come back and report that out to you. My question is, what are you doing to attract drivers? Or what are we going to do about that problem? Well, we upped the, the sub rate. That was one thing. Okay. Uh, we're losing several drivers because of the perp um, redu reduction in their retirement. Mm -hmm. um, Gary has a couple of drivers that are coming on board within the next couple of weeks. To attract other drivers, everybody's in the same boat. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's hard finding drivers. Um, that's why you know we wanted to contract out 10 more routes because we're having such a hard time with their attendance. Their attendance is bad also. Um, you know, when I have Gary riding, I have two or three of the mechanics driving a bus in either the morning or the afternoon shift. I have Karen driving a bus. It just shows you how how our attendance has been terrible in transportation where all these people are, are driving buses that should be in the office doing other things and it takes them away from their jobs. So once we get out of this contract <coughs> then we can make some really good changes I think to transportation. Our hands are tied right now for another year mm -hmm. because of the contract. I just wonder if you looked around the state to see if anybody is doing something innovative to attract people? Because of our contract, we have to, we're limited as far as what we could do. But, but I do think, okay. I do think over the course of the next um, eight nine months, you know, I think we can start doing some more research in relationship to that. Because as we're going into finish out this contract and move into a new uh, situation, it's important that we are looking and seeing if there are any models that are out there. Mm -hmm. But everyone, at least in our immediate area, uh, are experiencing a lot of the similar 
issues, and I don't know what we the answers that. are. We saw that coming down the road when when you can't get people in the first place, and then you make the test even more more difficult, and then you make the expense more difficult, then you make the driving itself test more difficult, and all that mounts up to people who are saying, I don't need this, mm -hmm. yeah. and they're just saying that. They're just saying that. The requirements to get your CDL yeah. are going to get a lot tougher. When you tougher. don't have someone, then you don't make it harder. You make mm -hmm. it easier. It's like mm. Well, they're doing it for the safety. I can understand okay. that. I, I get that. Testing. But those people are, well, most of the time they're very, very dependable people. And it's just, I just thought, we saw this coming about five years ago. Mm -hmm. I think with the insurance that we're offering, the PERF retirement, they get a good paid wage, they get a five hour minimum guarantee. That, that's great compared to what some other school corporations are offering where they're only giving them a four hour guarantee and they may not be giving them per. Uh, when Dr. Mill and I met with the, the drivers, I was just throwing out ideas such as, all right, what if you don't need insurance? Say you have insurance through your spouse. What if we started another salary schedule and said, okay, if you don't need our health insurance, we'll give you $3, $4 an hour more. Mm -hmm. If you don't retire from PERF, we're wasting 10% of their salary during the course of the year. They get the 3% back that we're paying, so it's costing us 13% for every employee that's in PERF. They get the 3% back if they quit or don't or are not eligible for PERF or don't have enough years, whatever. But we lose the 10%. And I says, I'd like to get out of PERF mm -hmm. and get a break away from PERF and say, all right, you know what? You pay your 3%, I'll give you 4%. That's 7% going into a tax sheltered annuity. The money's yours from day one. You don't mm -hmm. have to okay. go 10 years or have 85 points with your age and years of service. You work for us one month or 10 years or 20 years, it's your money. Mm -hmm. You invest it how you want. I think you're going to see a lot of schools breaking away from the defined pension plan. We just can't afford it. When we offer per for all of our employees down to 17 and a half hours, that's an expense that mm -hmm. you know we really need to start looking at in the future. So those are some of the items you know that we talked about, and they some of them were really saying, yeah, you pay me three, four dollars an hour more. You know, I'm a, I'm covered under my husband or my or my wife's insurance. That's money in their pocket. Tom, another question I have: If we go with these, are we going to have to hire additional staff down the road to manage, maintain, no, service? Their lease, it'll be Synovia that'll have to come out and do them. So it won't be any any cost to us. And we have a plan set up uh, on who's going to view all this great information. Mm -hmm. Who's okay? Yeah. Hopefully, we get our staff out of buses and analyzing data, right? Yeah. One of the things we've done, board, if you remember, with Ken Watson's transition into the transportation, but that was a big reason why we wanted there, just for the technology knowledge he was bringing to the table. So I think Tony, to answer that question, uh, it's our hope that he'll he'll be that individual at the point of this. And from a service perspective, you were uh, kind enough, board, to uh, approve a mechanic, another mechanic for down there. So when these service issues do arise, that we have that capability. So hopefully we've positioned our resources um, along those lines. All right. Any further questions? All right. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Looks so like our next item is the child <coughs> child place lease contract agreement. So Mr. Harris is going to take us through that. Thanks, Mr. Baby Board. Um, this uh, is where we house the alternative suspension out on Highway 62. Um, this original lease um, was entered back in 2010. It was extended in 2012 and expires in June of 14. So it's just a simple extension for two more years. You'll, you'll remember that um, there, it's just a dollar lease. It's a great partnership that we have with Child Place. Uh, we also utilize um, their uh, intern counselors through um, the Kent School of Social Work through U of L. So it's just been a tremendous um, program for us, a great partnership. We'll just ask that you allow us to extend the, the contract. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Gilkey. Second. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Questions, comments? All right. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you. 
Next item is the student rights and responsibilities student discipline policy. Yes, sir, board. Um, you know, in the past we've done some extensive work on this. Um, there were no major changes that uh, really we felt was, were needed. Um, we did change the policy that uh, the board had approved on the new e-cigarette language um, last time. And then we are required to update the asbestos from year to year. So all of those um, requirements have been made and uh, would ask for the board's approval on the student rights and responsibilities. All right. Thank you. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Satterley. Second. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Any questions, comments? All right. All in favor? 7 0. Next item is the Norton Ac Academy Agreement. Yes, Board. This is um, at Jeffersonville High School, and, and you are familiar with the Norton Healthcare, Norton Academy, where our students could obtain their certified nursing assistance, their CNA. Um, and this is the agreement that we have had in the past, um, and, and really the changes. They do their on site um, clinicals at Providence Retirement Home. Providence changed their name, the facility name has just changed. So this is just simply a reflection of the name change at Providence, uh, that facility. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Second. Thank you, Ms. Gilkey. Providence Retirement Home. Now that is that the one over in New Albany? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Any questions, comments? All in favor? All right. Seven zero. Thank you. Next item is the 2014-15 Elementary Student Handbooks, and there's a bunch of them. And board, um, hopefully, we can save you a little bit of time. Um, we, I'd like to uh, at least recommend you consider approval of, of the elementary and secondary handbooks in one motion. Um, and there are no major changes to the handbooks from what you approved last year. So if there were any significant changes, we would have detailed those for you and laid those out, but uh, they were reviewed. Um, every year they get reviewed at the school level, and uh, Mr. Hare makes sure that's facilitated uh, district-wide. And so there are no major changes uh, to any of those handbooks. And from a timeless perspective, we would appreciate perhaps uh, you approving both elementary and secondary handbooks for next school year. Move to approve all elementary and secondary student handbooks as presented. All right. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Questions, comments? Everybody, everybody read all of these, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good deal. All right. All in favor? 7 0. Thanks. All right, next uh, last item is the contract with Marjorie Simic, Navigator Learning uh, Solutions. And Ms. Hartledge. Um, good evening. You may recall a couple months ago you approved um, the early literacy grants from the state of Indiana. And as part of that, we were able to purchase leveled literacy intervention kits. And this contract with Ms. Simic is um, to provide support to our K through 2 teachers so that they can become familiar with these kits and to better translate um, how to put these in place to better guide instruction based upon student data and progress monitoring and goal setting as part of our intervention program. And she is scheduled to come in June to provide that training. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Have any questions, comments? All right, all in favor? 7 -0. So, thank you. All right, do we have any board reports or requests? I don't think I see any of those. Anyone? Okay. Uh, we do have one public comment on non-agenda items, and I think it's Mr. Denton. So. I want to address you on sick days, personal days. Um, of course, we for a while, we, when I first started, we had sick days and personal days. Then we changed it to just a day that's you know, one kind of day. Um, and then at the last contract, we changed it to sick days and personal days again. And with, with the idea that um, we, that we cut back on people's absences, uh, teachers' absences in particular, uh, with seven sick days and five personal days. Of course, we have had some calls with people say, can I use five personal days in a row? Well, Marty Bell, when he was here, he said, sure, you can use five personal days in a row. That was, that was understood. And you're not going to the doctor. You don't need a doctor's excuse for that. And we have some people, like going to weddings and 
Alaska and things. They needed they needed to go to their sister's wedding, and, and it worked out really nice for them. Um, but I know for a lot of us, uh, it's, it's hard to tell what if it's going to be a personal day or a sick day. If my daughter is going to have an ear operation, but I'm not the one that's sick, do I call that a personal day or do I call that a sick day? Well, I would I would call that a personal day because I'm going I'm, I'm going to be the person going there, and and I used it like that. Um, I use personal days a lot of times in the past for lobbying. I would use my personal days because I thought it was important to go lobby, and so I use my personal days to lobby. Uh, personal days also, um, there seemed like there was never enough time to get papers graded or get the, the grades on the computer. There's always that crunch time, always. So ideally, personal days, I can use that day, get a sub, set up things. I can be in the classroom even with the sub and the kids. I can be working on grades and what have you, and use a personal day. Um, sick days, a lot of teachers think sick days, like if, if you're sick at the last minute, that's, that's the time you're going to use a sick day. But if you, you have something coming up uh, that you know you've got to go to the hospital, run tests and that sort of thing, maybe that's a personal day. So there's been some confusion back and forth on the personal days and sick days. And I, I'm sure that some people just say, you know, I need a day. I, I know I've, I've got a lot of things going on, but I just my head's in a mess and I just need a day. And maybe that would be a personal day too. Or maybe maybe that would be a sick day, I don't know. But there's there has been a lot of confusion on sick days and personal days because we did separate them and we did, and then and teachers come to me all, all the time. I'm gonna be doing this. Frank, is this, is this a personal day or a sick day? Well, our past president said, you know, save those sick days for that last minute emergency. It's my time up. 30 seconds. No. That's okay. Right. And, but I would always say, um, use your sick days first because your personal days you can use for anything. Um, again, there's just a lot of questions back and forth, and people use their days. It's part of their benefit, and, and uh, hopefully they, they don't abuse that, but, but I know they do use their days, except for me, and I've got 154 accumulated, and a few more I got this year. I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. <laughs> Probably. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Denton. Mr. Hall, do you have any board comments tonight? No, sir. Ms. Perkins? No, thank you. Mr. Satterley? No, sir. Ms. Kraft? I do. I, ha I brought, for your amazement and for your proof, In entertainment, all you right. athletes that Nancy Kraft is the most unathletic person on this board, I admit that. I challenge you on that one. I went, <laughs> I went to the Jeffersonville <laughs> High School basketball bench. And nobody passed out. <laughs> so there's my proof. Um, so now you all have to consider me part athletic. Thank you. <laughs> Renee, please log that. <laughs> yeah, Nancy <laughs> Athletic. <laughs> all right, Mr. White? No, thank you. Ms. Gilkey? No, sir. All right. Dr. Mellon? It's up to you. Just a couple of things. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Renee. Uh, Mr. Hobgood and Kelly Harbin because there was a quick turnaround from this being a precinct location to this board meeting and those three individuals made that happen very quickly so I want to thank them for their support and then also board I had a chance last night to go to a special performance of Smokey Joe's Cafe I know Mrs. Kraft was there as well it was at the uh, Derby Dinner Playhouse in Clarksville which was the first time I'd been there uh, the kids adapted to that venue well. They did a great job. Uh, there was a live auction. There was just a lot of support. It was a real good evening and a good event. And again, uh, they're going to be performing this Friday and Saturday night at 7.30 at Jeff High. If you've not had that opportunity to see it, it is by far, I've never seen anything, um, this doesn't even come close to any other high school production I've ever witnessed. And in fact, I would pay pay to go see it because uh, it's so professional. So those of you who had an opportunity, uh, please take advantage of that. And uh, hopefully uh, they're going in June to Nebraska and it's a lot of money. And uh, I'll be meeting with Mrs. Strait and Mrs. Miller and talking a little bit about where they are from a financial perspective because we want to make sure those students are able to, to get to Nebraska. So uh, I appreciate uh, any support you might be able to give them and appreciate what you've done. Many of you have already seen the performance. Mm -hmm.
Uh, who was the young lady that you said needs to be on American Idol? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think her name is Kim Salter. Okay. Yeah, well, there are a lot of them that could. Yeah. Yeah. Really? But there are so so many talented kids. I'm not so sure I've ever seen so many talented kids in one spot. But uh, she's she's even she's the she's very special in terms of her talent in a cast of very special kids. And real diversified cast. Mm -hmm. Just like we are. Yeah. It's perfect. It's really, really and the awards keep coming in, by the way. So, all right, I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. <laughs> all right, all in favor? <laughs> all right, good night.